All right, welcome everybody. This is Job Interview Techniques. Uh, there are two ways to look at this. One is that I am training you as uh, future job interviewers about different ways to do job interviews. And the second is I'm training you as job interviewees that if you know how these interview uh, techniques work, you can uh, adjust your behavior towards them. So I'm going to talk about four uh, you know, very common uh, interview techniques, the unstructured and structured interviews, uh, the situational interviews, and the stress interview. Uh, the first three, uh, the structured and unstructured and situational, have been discussed in your textbook, but I'd like to flesh uh, at least the situational one out a little bit because that's my favorite. And uh, we've been talking about the stress interview. You may not realize it, but you will soon. Ooh, what an interesting fade. Uh, so the unstructured interview. Uh, basically, the interviewer asks questions whatever they feel like. Uh, the textbook talked about this. I don't want to do all that much on it, but there's no advanced planning. There could be different questions for each candidate. Uh, this has low validity and uh, in terms of predicting job performance and you lack consistency across candidates. Uh, without going to a structured interview, you can, for example, improve the uh, reliability and predictive validity of an unstructured interview with training. Uh, however, most people are getting away from the unstructured interview because since it's unstructured, biases and especially biases against protected classes could enter into the different questions that are being asked to different people and so that could open the door to a lawsuit or a charge of uh, violating EEOC law and structured interviews are the norm uh, you know here at York I've served on several search committees and we have to submit our interview questions to HR beforehand and we have to use the same set for everybody and that's exactly what a structured interview is we have a uh, you know, printed form uh, we record in uh, writing the applicants responses uh, the results in terms of the predictive validity are greatly improved over unstructured interviews uh, and you know, sometimes the validity goes as high as cognitive ability tests. Uh, while the textbook and other sources say it's rarely used, I still say that it's becoming the norm, at least in good uh, jobs, jobs where people are being hired for salary and not hourly. Usually in hourly situations, you're going to see the unstructured interviews. And my favorite uh, is the situational interview. When I've interviewed people, I've used it because it's been very, very helpful. What you do is you focus on the behaviors needed for successful performance in the job. So you develop the interview questions. Uh, you basically look at critical incidents on the job. Uh, and this is pretty much how you would start to do some type of work analysis or job analysis. You would uh, determine uh, the benchmarks for sc scoring responses to these critical incidences. And then you translate these incidences into interview questions. And this is generally used to select workers for semi-skilled and skilled factory jobs, sales, and first-line supervisors. And it correlates uh, positively up around a little bit better than uh, structured interviews with later work performance. And an example uh, so uh, one uh, managerial job I had, I was supervising a, uh, you know, uh, the Family Resource Center at a local junior high school. And during the summer, we had a work program where we had grant money and we'd basically do a community farm or a neighborhood farm uh, garden and the kids would work on it. And we would require the kids uh, to put half of their uh, paychecks into a savings account and we would make a big deal out of it the, uh, the social worker would take them to the bank and they'd all sign up for a uh, you know savings account and also got to tell you that this 
project was being done in the worst uh, junior high school in the poorest neighborhood in town. And so very often, uh, you know, parents would come in and they would want all of the, uh, you know, students' paycheck. That is, this is a junior high student, a 12-year-old, and they would like all the paycheck. And so one of the situational interview questions we had was, in our summer work program, we require children to deposit a, por a portion of their paychecks into a savings account. A parent comes into you in an agitated and angry state, demands that the child's entire paycheck be given to him, the parent. How would you handle this situation? And then we had scored benchmarks in terms of what would be a bad response, what would be an okay response, what would be a good response. And in this case, uh, all, most people would say in terms of answering this question that actually giving in to the parent because it's the parents, you know, the parent has the control of the child, that would be the best thing to do. In fact, that was one of the poor responses uh, because, as I said, based on the clientele, oftentimes when parents come in and want, they want the full paycheck, they want to buy drugs or alcohol with it. And so one of the points that we want to do is make sure that the kids get to keep their money, get to keep it until school begins so they can buy school gear and uh, notebooks and such. And so uh, we wanted our uh, counselors to stand firm on this. And so the benchmarks were uh, that a moderate response would be, well, we need to talk to our, you know, you know, my supervisor, and a good response would be they would just tell the parent no, that they say, this is the rules, and I really can't change the rules, and I would get in trouble if I tried to, and uh, because that was based on people's success in the past in dealing with angry parents. Or another example, uh, while working in the center, that is the uh, Family Resource Center in the junior high school, uh, a sixth grader uh, who you've had a behavioral contract with, which means that you've been working with them as a counselor, runs into the center followed by the teacher. The teacher is visibly upset, accuses the student of using foul language. How do you handle this situation? And the benchmark, the benchmarks are a very poor response would be turn the student over to the teacher. Uh, this question was based on a situation where uh, a student called a teacher an MF and uh, one thing about the junior high school since it was the worst junior high school in town uh, they had the youngest and least experienced teachers there the minute a teacher got enough seniority to transfer out they did and it was amazing I would go there and I couldn't tell the students from the, the teachers because the teachers were all so young and so when you have somebody who's 21 just out of uh, you know college and you know they're having a bad day and a you know mouthy student calls them an MF uh, they just snapped and so the worst thing you could do is turn the student over to the teacher and so again we had benchmarks on how we would like to have them respond so couple examples of a situational interview and the situational que uh, interview questions. What we do is we present a real life situation and then we see how uh, the interviewee responds. Stress interviews. Now this is the interview type that was not discussed in our textbook and uh, uh, I think it's important to know about because we're going to run into it uh, both in terms of as a job seeker and a uh, interview giver. So uh, stress interviews were designed for high pressure and fast paced jobs and that's the key there and I'll turn on my uh, laser pointer so I can highlight that. Uh, that's what these, uh, you know, the stress interview was for. They're like a situational interview uh, whereas a situational interview would allow you to demonstrate uh, KSAs or decision-making processes in terms of the specific of the job. Uh, you know, the stress interview will allow you to demonstrate your emotional and interpersonal capacity which is needed for the job. And that's the major difference between a situational and a uh, stress interview. Uh, the types of stress interviews, uh, there are many types. 
uh, the interviewer engages in dismissive behavior that is you come into the office and the interviewer is working on something and they don't notice you and so you're just standing there what do you do rude behavior well I've never seen anybody so ill-prepared uh, you know apply for this job as you intimidating uh, what do you think uh, you know why do you think that you are able to work for us impossible questions which I'll get to in a, a minute and then just generally aggressive behavior you know insulting behavior uh, intimidating behavior like I've uh, described uh, as I said before uh, you know, competency-based interviews, the structured interviews, the unstructured interviews, the situational interviews, these allow people to demonstrate KSAs that they'll use on the job. Uh, stress interviews allow them to demonstrate real-world skills, uh, that is, ecologically valid skills, mainly that emotional and inter interpersonal capacity, that is, that, uh, you know, emotional intelligence that's needed to deal with difficult situations in difficult jobs. Uh, stress interviews done the right way are good. Uh, I'm not aware of any uh, studies on, for example, uh, the predictive validity of stress interviews. If you find any, let me know. I'd appreciate it. Uh, but usually they're done by trained professionals and they're mainly done for people applying for high pressure jobs, stock traders. Uh, executive level uh, positions. However, the stress interview has become so ingrained in our society or business uh, culture that uh, you know it's permeated the whole culture. So you have untrained or really uh, ignorant interviewers uh, thinking that this is the way you do an interview and not really realizing that the stress interview is a pretty high-powered technique and what happens is they usually just bring in a couple stress questions they are doing a, a, a unstructured interview or a structured interview and then they just drop a, a, a stress bomb right there in your lap and you know that's the wrong way to do it if you're not gonna set out to do a stress interview don't do a stress interview uh, just if you want to be supportive and and uh, get the person relaxed so you can diagnose the level of their KSAs do it don't then drop a stress bomb into them so I said before that you are familiar with some of these stress questions these impossible questions that's because the last three questions uh, in this list uh, are stress questions and uh, you know the whole point the first rule of interview club is do not answer these questions the second rule is do not answer these questions these three questions you should not answer or uh, let me be more specific salary oh there's a cat oh pointer laser pointer go get a cat uh, what are your salary requirements don't answer this question uh, Memorize this because this is what you want to say word for word. Right now, the most important thing is to see whether I would fit well into your organization. So talking about a salary now would get in the way of this, and that's the most important thing. So it's best we just wait until later on in the process to talk about salary. Or if you want to say, well, right now we're talking about whether or not you're going to offer me the job. Once that's done, then we can talk about salary. And then if they try to force you to talk about salary, stand your ground because this is a stress question. And they want to see whether or not they can force you to do something stupid that works against your own be uh, benefit. And that's the purpose of this question. Now, you may think standing up to somebody gee, in an interview, telling them, no, I'm not going to answer it, that's stupid. OK, well. Uh, 2017 a student who heard this lecture uh, that semester uh, spring semester 2017 professor taking your advice on a phone interview less than 20 minutes ago a stress question literally just landed me my dream job uh, I had to let you know thank you a real student in this class the stress question was about uh, salary and when I spoke to her later on she told me that she could hear on the phone people 
really just relaxing when uh, she said, no, we want to talk about that later on. Right now we want to see how well I fit. So she got her dream job uh, at MTA uh, because of that. What are your weaknesses? Oh boy, this is the real stress question. Uh, here is my answer. I'm aware of my weaknesses and I take care not to let them affect my work and I'm constantly working to improve those areas. However, it would not be wise to share them in a job interview. And they'll say, well, okay, well, I understand, but what, what are, what's one of your weaknesses? Uh, as I said, I don't think it would be wise to share that. And you just stick with that. Some you know students say, how can you do that? You, how can you say no? Because it's a stress question. And so that's the point. They want to see whether or not you're going to actually break down and say something that would hurt you. What do I mean? Whatever you uh, say in response to that question uh, is wrong. Uh, you know, for example, one student said, a weakness that I have is forming close relationships with coworkers. Uh, what I've learned is to keep work and personal life separate. I'm a very caring person, however, I have to learn to balance both. Uh, this would scare me as a manager to hear this. Uh, what, what type of history have you had with relationships on the job? And are you the, you know, so you have to fight this? I don't want you to work with me. That's a good reason not to hire you. Uh, what is your weakness? My strongest weakness is failing, not being able to get the task done on a specific time frame. Some student actually said that in this assignment. God, you know, that is, whoo, you know, just, well, you know, what's your greatest weakness? I fail on things. Okay. You know, and people say, ah, oh, I know the answer is I'm going to say I'm a perfectionist. No. Uh, I've been a manager to perfectionists before and that is really bad. Perfectionists mean that I'm not going to get work from them on time because they're getting it perfect. Also, uh, I'm going to have to deal with the aftermath or after effects of their perfectionism, which is they're going to be under a lot of stress because I'm going to be forcing them to get things done before they're ready, and that's going to stress them out. Uh, too critical of myself. Oh, that should be one word there. Sorry, folks. Uh, that also, you know, tells me something negative about you, about why I wouldn't hire you. I lack patience. Uh, well, I don't want to have somebody that that's their greatest weakness, that they're impatient. Jeez. Uh, so anything you say to answer this question is working against you. And so uh, don't say anything. And this, you know, this is my stock answer. It may not be yours. Uh, but I think this would be the best one for younger people to do because it gets across the right things and it does so without being too forceful and in a way polite. And uh, a little bonus, while uh, how you handle stress is not a stress question, which is kind of ironic, uh, it does have a very specific answer that p interviewers are looking for. Uh, everyone says like humor or I have to-do lists or exercise or yoga or walk to the bathroom. Nobody, and let me do this now, nobody is interested in how you handle stress. Here's the right way to answer this question. How do you handle stress? The answer is you don't handle it alone. This question is not a stress question, but it is a trick question. We're trying to get you to say something uh, about how you deal with emergencies. And so here's how you answer it. I would say, if I was in a job interview, I handle stresses on the job by identifying what's causing it, identifying what resources I can use to solve the problem. So cause and resources. For example, when I was the director of the York Research Pool, the CUNY IRB created a great deal of work for me uh, with little warning. Also, the work had to be completed very quickly. I realized I couldn't do it by myself, so I talked to faculty who benefited the pool, explained, and asked for their help. I was able to break up the large task into smaller tasks that my coworkers could help me with. Uh, as a manager, I want to know that if you're stressed out, you're going to tell me. 
Uh, if you know you have a job and you're constantly stressed out because you feel like you can't get everything done, at some point you're going to fail. And as a manager, that's going to cause me problems. And so I want to know that you are going to recognize when you're overloaded and you're going to go to your manager and say, I'm overloaded. I need help. What do you suggest? And not that you're going to go off by yourself and you're going to hide it from me until things really blow up into a major problem that I have to deal with. So that's how you handle that trick question. Uh, so first off, you basically recognize it's not your fault, uh, you know, but don't try to dodge the responsibility. Uh, mention that you recognize this early on, and then you took responsibility or you took charge, you identified resources, and then you were instrumental in building the help. So that's the you know, bullet points that your answer to that question should have. And as I said, uh, these questions, these 90 second questions, are stock questions that you should have stock answers for before you go into a job interview. Some you're going to tailor to the job, like uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. You're going to find out about the job and you're going to tailor your description of who you are and what skills you have to the job. Others are general stock questions to basic, uh, you know, these stress questions and these trick questions. All right, that's it for today. Oh, laser pointer. Bye-bye.